Hey, Crafty Family. How are you doing this evening? I'm Eve with the baby's booty. And tonight we are going to be blinging. Yes, we are going to be blinging. But I made a design tonight. I'm not quite finished with it. So you guys are going to have to finish it with me. My bad. Because when I tell you this spring forward thing, it's not sitting well with a helper. I'm just like, I was blinging my little heart away. Mr. came in here. He was like, here, we need to get this straight up. And I'm like, why is you rushing me? And I happened to look at the clock and it was like 8.44. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. No, it was like, uh, what's that? That um, 7.55. 7.55 be playing in on her 10. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and that is exactly how I sounded when I realized it was 8.44, y'all. I cannot fail. So anyways, um, my brain is saying it's eight o'clock, so uh, whatever. But anyway, so I got to finish the design with y'all. So you'll see that process. But I made the design so that we could do multiple colors if we wanted to. And so that's the goal for tonight. Um, aside from that, um, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, the buy-in ends tonight. If you didn't get the newsletter, if you didn't get the text message, I don't know what to tell you, fam. <laughs> you only got a few more hours in this mug. So uh, just keep that in mind, you guys. You have um, tonight and the buy-in ends, okay? So the next buy-in will kick back off the end of March. So fret not if you can't participate this time. You will have another opportunity, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise at the end of March. Um, so, you guys, thank you for coming to hang out with me. I'm going to go ahead and say hi, jump in the chat real quick, and say hello to the folks that are in here tonight with us. And you guys have been chatting it up. That's what's up. Hey, Kelly, how are you? Welcome. Hey, Kevin, welcome. And thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Who Group member. And hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you're doing well. We got Dennis in the house tonight. Hey, Dennis, welcome. The rhinestone mechanic himself. We got Sherelle Green, welcome. And no, I didn't remember the spring forward, fam. The spring forward happened all by itself. <laughs> My body was like, we ain't springing nothing, okay? Yeah, that's pretty much how that went down this morning. Patricia Johnson, welcome. Thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Hope Group member, Nick Nick Nurse. Hey, honey, welcome, neighbor. Hey, Gail Designs, welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hope Group member as well. Greg Barker's in the house, welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hope Group member. Sharon Davis is in the house. Hey, honey, welcome. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight and for being a YouTube Hope Group member. We also have, hi, Sheila Cushionberry, welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well, Baby Giant Services LLC, welcome. Y'all, I got hair, this, uh, really, really, wig, really, I just, I can't. Uh, so, Crafty, welcome. Thank <laughs> you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. I appreciate you being here, that to this creations. Hey, Dorica, welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. We also have Nicole Reeves. Hey, honey, buddy. Welcome and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Let's see. Let's go on down, go on down. Hey, Jesse Gibson. Welcome. Hey, Spilling the Diversity. Welcome and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. And for those of you all that's in here that are also in Patrice's group and you got the uh, uh, Bling Box subscription, I enjoy hanging out with y'all yesterday. It was fun. So it's super cool. So you guys, please keep an eye out across all of the folks that you see on here on the regular. A lot of times there's extracurricular activities that we do on the side that you're more than welcome to join in if you have the membership, like here on this YouTube channel or Patrice's YouTube channel or Angel B or any of the others. There are extra stuff that we do from time to time. So definitely check that out. In our Facebook groups, we generally do announce it. So to let you know what's going on and come hang out after hours, holler. What? Will it welcome Claudia Car? Welcome. Thank you for joining us, Miss 143. Thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Hoop group member. EJ's daughter, welcome and thank you for 
being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Miss Beverly Smith is also a YouTube Hoop Group member. Welcome. <laughs> hey, Mama Vi, welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Thank you for being here. Hey, Kristen. Hey, Chris Hayden. Howdy, howdy. Welcome. Yvonne Hudson from Cali. Welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Sylvia Dinkins, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Hey, Kelly Wyatt. And I'm going to scroll down. Hey, Cheryl H. Welcome. Hey, Patrice, welcome. Poor G, welcome. Pamela Bradley White, Miss JB, Valerie Morgan, also all of them YouTube Hoop Group members. Hey, Marlene Kelsey, Nicole Butler, Nani's Journey, Logo Zone, Logo Zone, Unbiased LLC, Renee Meyer, Willie Roseman, Jackie Wallace, Mimi, welcome, y'all. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Hey, Monica Lee. So, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm sorry to think you'd be showing out behind the scenes. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know what you mean, fam. I don't ever show out. Ever. I'm a good girl. <laughs> Knowing full lies, right? Full lies. Um, let's see. One, two, hey, Ernique, welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. I saw something. I saw something. I saw something. I can't find it anymore. Hey, Creative Notions, welcome. Um, so yeah, I am going to show you actually, let's click over and show you guys. I'm gonna scroll all the way down. I apologize, and then I'm gonna go back and check the ones that have been starred by the mister here in a moment. But um, I have let's see, let's go Ryanstone Mechanic dot com, and I'm going to share screen with you guys. And then we're going to bring over the silhouette. Open up. Well, it's already open, but I'm going to slide it over so that you can see that too. But this is the rhinestone mechanic. He makes designs for our group um, every week, y'all. It's just like, I mean, and be on it too. You hear me? Because I'll be forgetting. And I get an email. And it's like, hey, the designs. And I'm like, oh, shoot, dog. I completely forgot. <laughs> Like it did today, because I'm telling y'all, woo, that uh, I don't like this hour up stuff. But anyway, so here is our category. You see right here, it says the baby's booty. If you click there, then the latest designs are up here. So we got us a mystery box. It's $2. It will stay $2. It will not change. So definitely grab that. But then we also have, how many designs did he do? Okay, so for... Eight, nine, ten, eleven designs are in here. Y'all look at the bunny butt. Look at the bunny butts. Okay. Super cute. Super duper cute. So you got all kinds of beautiful designs you can check out. Go ahead and grab those. They are $5 for 24 hours only. Okay. So after 24 hours, the price does go up. So if you're going to get your designs, go ahead and snatch them now okay so like i said these are definitely made for us and they are there now let me show y'all what i've been working on now this one is a um well eh, damn it maybe that'll it'll work okay no oh gosh why is you not working i don't know why that's not working hold on let me see if i can't get this to work Bloop. i don't know why this is acted up. There we go. Okay. So this is the design that I was working on, right? And so um, it's not supposed to be green back here. So the point of this design, and I need to finish it. I'm not finished with it yet. I'm in the process of designing is for me to be able to do multiple colors right here with these um, lines, right? So that's a thing. Let me delete that. So I have been working pretty hard trying to get this to turn out super cute and hopefully, and, and come up with not just a way to do a lot of different colors and forgive me dennis and patrice and those who are better at designing stuff but y'all probably be cringing 
but you see how I'm doing what I'm saying? I was trying to do this where this is multiple colors. You don't have to do just the green. But if you get the design, then, which, of course, is not available yet because uh -huh, it's not on the website yet. I'm not done with it. But once it's done, then if you want to do other colors, you'll be able to. All right. That's the plan man. So this is where I am. Let's make this one yellow. And this is what I've been working on the last couple of hours uh, prior to coming on. And I want to finish it with you all and uh, get this thing on and popping. Whoops. Nope. That's not what we want to do. So working on designs is... What's the word I want to use? It can be relaxing, but it can also be stressful. And I am speaking it S-K-R-E-S-S, -S, if you will, because, I mean, it just, it is what it is. Um, But at the same time, it can also be quite relaxing once, especially if you're in a groove. That's the... the terminology look at this look at this look at this mess that is not what i wanted to do but we're gonna do that right there and so because i had a, a teacher who was muy excellente um it does make it a little easier for me personally now i'm not the best at it but I do enjoy it. And because I enjoy it, that's why I share the designs that I make with you guys because I do enjoy doing this. So I hope you don't mind. Uh, cuss. I hope you don't mind watching while I finish this up because I do want to get this done so that we can. Oh, that's too, too much. So that we can have fun cutting this out and blinging it in all of the colors. Okay. And for those who may not know this process, I also want to take this moment to let you know that the next bling class is scheduled. So the next bling class is on the schedule. So if you want to learn how to do this, I mean, yeah, you totally could just sit here and watch what I'm doing and kind of like repeat the same actions. But if you want to learn in detail, we got the class for you and the class is scheduled. So I will put the link up for the beginner's class. There's a beginner's class to teach how to do this. And then there's also a advanced and an advanced class the advanced class is also scheduled so you have um two opportunities now let me pull that up actually because let's go to craftable things dot of the com and if you go to professional services i believe that's where it is here is the beginner's course for Saturday, March the 16th, okay? So this is the link for the beginner's course, all right? And y'all, this is not, not no five-second class, okay? This is like legit a whole three, four, five-hour class where you learn in detail. That's that class. Um, then if you go to thebabysbooty.com, and then go to events, which is right here. Here is the next class. Um, and this is the advanced class. Now, the thing with this advanced class is you really want to be sure to take the beginner's class. Because when we go into this, this advanced class, next level class, Y'all, we don't we don't play games. We we jump right into it. You supposed to know silhouette, you're supposed to know the toolbars you're supposed to and see she goes over all of that kind of stuff in the beginner's class in addition to teaching you how to do simple rhinestone designs 
But in the advanced class, we go into in depth and go even deeper into rhinestone designing. And you really learn how to do all of these processes. And so we don't have time to play around. We got to get it on and popping and, and so to speak. So you have two classes, the beginner's class. If you haven't taken that beginner's class, take the beginner's class. Then when you're ready to take the advanced class, take the advanced class. There will be another advanced class. So if you feel uncomfortable going from the beginner's class, which is on a Saturday, to the advanced class, which is on a Sunday, if that's team too much, I'm learning too much, is brain overload, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to take the class the next day. We will have another advanced class. So just hang on to your hat and then do the advanced class when we hold it the next time. Okay. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense because I don't want you to feel pressured into taking both at the same time when you don't have to. Okay. Let's do that right there. So at any rate, um, so yeah, that class is scheduled. And then, oh, let's do this because that was annoying when it did it that time. So definitely check that out if you want to take both classes. I did drop the link to both classes in the chat. Um, they are not in the description, but I'll make sure to go back and put them in the description for if you want to take the um, either one of those classes, okay? And you're watching the replay. And if you're watching the replay, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, fam. All right. So, yay. That wasn't too terribly bad. I'm not completely. Let's see. I think I think it's good. I think we're good. I just got to snatch out these green pieces and then turn it. Um, turn the colors away from green because I don't want them to be green. But you totally can do this in whatever color you so choose to do. You see the route I was going with. And I'm going to show you something else too, actually. Let's do this. Oh, Sharon Davenport. I got to fix one of the designs. I think it was the 40s. I got to fix it because it's not importing into Cricut correctly. Nope, wrong color. There we go. All right. Otherwise, hopefully you guys have been doing well. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And here in a moment, I'll turn and be looking. I turned this green. I didn't mean to. And um, answer your questions. Actually, that's not the color I want. I want it to be because that's what it's going to be. And we're going to cut this out. Do I want to cut this out with? I might cut this out with Romeo. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Let's see. All right. Give me one moment. As soon as I get all of these colors where I want them to be, I knew I was going to do that. I want you and then probably should do these in okay so it also can be quite this just this simple it can it can go as simple as this as well where is three colors and honestly you could even take this if you wanted to and go gray with it as well and there you got a two color design um so this is pretty much how the design is supposed to be 
I need more than less than a week notice for the classes. I have to budget. Um, yeah, no, the one for Patrice has been up there for a while. But yeah, so usually what she does is she'll let us know that there's a class going on or coming up. And gosh, Patrice, you talked about your class. Your class was up the first, I think. It was longer than that. Your class was up. Um, because I didn't have the advanced class up at the advanced class up yet. So yours was already up. Um, but it's no worries. I mean, we do them roughly once a month. And the only reason this one was the way it was as far as timing and whatnot is because, um, we were undecided whether to do it the same week or the next week, but we collectively decided we'll do it the same week. All right, so let us group the sucker. And then we're going to compound path this sucker, which turns it a completely different color. But that lets you know you did it right. And then we're going to grab these stars. And we're going to release the rhinestones in those. You tell my subcategories for uh, all of them, Dennis, or for, you know what I meant to do? Actually, Dennis added some subcategories and I'm trying to figure out, are you talking about where the subcategories you were telling me about the, um, oh, you know what? I still did that wrong. The subcategories you were talking about was it in the whole website or just under the baby's booty? I'm pretty sure you were talking about um, the whole website. All right, so that's that. Let's ungroup everything. It still didn't do what I wanted it to do, but that's all right. That's one thing I love about Silhouette. Like you can still drag and select everything that you want. It makes it so much easier. If you don't have Silhouette, I feel sorry for you. I love Silhouette. Silhouette is amazing. It is an excellent program. And I am super excited for Romeo and hoping that a lot of these good qualities about these different designs will carry over. Okay, I'm done, finally. Woohoo! And here's a couple of options that I was looking at. Um, I was looking at doing shine on in cursive, but I decided not to because not everybody can read cursive and we don't want to leave out the folks that can't read cursive. Okay, so I am, this get moved over, it looks like. It'll be all right. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to save this to my hard drive. Silhouette is on sale for 49 Holler! Drop the link, Miss uh, Joyce, if you have it. If you don't, can somebody drop the link to Silhouette, please? All right, save as, save to hard drive. We're going to go downloads. And we're going to go SVG. Channel. And we're going to put this in the downloads folder. And then we're going to open up Leonardo. And get Leonardo up in the his. Oh, it's already open. Look at there. Okay. So let us. I like that too. Maybe it's been that price for a while now. Yeah. Oh, no, Jelena. I'm glad you got the hospital. If you out, then that means you are recuperating, and that's very good. Just our category. Oh, cool. Okay. Neato. So we're going to go to file. You know what? Let me... No, I don't want to do that. I was making some things for my glasses. Let's see. Let's open this up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Let me go to his start stuff, because if I don't, I'll get fussed at. Um... Let's see. 
I said, hey there. Hey, Pamela Bradley, White Porgy, Miss Jake B, Valerie Morgan. Okay, so I said those. Picture me crafting. Hey, Miss Merlinda Lacey. Hey, Jenny Harmon, Nene Designs, Tammy the Bag Lady. Thank y'all for being YouTube group, group members. Lena Doyle Crafting, Gigi's Boutique, Judy Angelman, Sean at Geo Savvy Designs. Is that right, Sean? Forgive me if it's not. Let me know that I'm saying that right. Uh, Leslie Cash Tips. Oh, thank you. LA Artistry, Miss Joyce, Jelena Cooper, Danny. I look like the beauty school dropout girl in Greece. <laughs> I love it. That is hilarious. Why is my screen? Oh, because y'all looking at this screen. My bad. Um, did it open back up? Yeah, open back up. It just opened up over here. Okay. Let's go to design. Let's go to file. Let's go to import. Let's go to downloads. Let's go to shine on and click open. And here it is. We're going to do cut only. We got two colors. Yas. And here we are. Super easy. Mac and cheesy. So what's going to happen is when we send this to cut, I'm going to ungroup it. This is going to cut. And then this is going to cut. And nine times out of 10, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, like tape this off so that I can do the different colors the way I want to, but leave it as one template because, you know, ain't nobody got time for the other stuff. Okay. And so here's one template. Here's the other. Now I'm going to cut it on a cutting mat. I'm not going to cut it. Um, hey, LaShonda Rice. Oh, she had a party. Holler. Turn up for me. Hey. I don't turn up for nothing. Y'all turn up in the bed. That's and I go to sleep. That's my turn up. Yeah. Hey Chris. Hey. Um, so let me hey Carrie 0119. When I'm gonna cut this, um, so I'm cutting this on a uh cutting mat. So I'm gonna go cutting mat. Oh, actually, let's send design. Go ahead and send it. Um, all artwork, don't separate by color. We're going to send this. Why is it not showing? What did I do wrong? I done, done something wrong, y'all. That's crazy. I usually don't do stuff wrong with Leonardo. Let me type this to 24. Maybe that's what's wrong. Hmm. I'm gonna bring this down here. Bring this right here. Let's change that color. Can we change the color? Yeah, we can change the color. Let's change it to blue so that I can see it. Don't separate by color. Send. There we go. I've had Silhouette for about 10 years and never learned how to use it. I just purchased the business edition. You make it look easy. Girl, the only reason it looks easy is because of Patrice and her beginner's class. So definitely go check it out, girl. She'll have you hooked all the way up. Jeannie Harmon, congratulations with your Juliet money. Hello, yes, honey. Yes, congratulations, fam. Robin Murphy, hey, honey. Welcome. So I'm going to cut this on my cutting mat. And so I'm going to click on cutting mat right here in the cutting properties. It says large Caesar mat. Um... I'm going to have to get a large, another kind of mat, but that's neither here nor there. Um, we are going, not going to mirror or anything like that. Hey, Kai Smith. And we're going to use the cutters settings. Okay. So let's go over to my messy table. And we're going to go to... Bloop, and I'm gonna have to change my microphone because I still, y'all, I still ain't found my microphone. I am so upset. It's not the microphone, it's the adapter that hooks into the computer to make my wireless microphones work. And I cannot find it. I am just too through. Okay, so because I'm too through, I can't find it. All right, so here's some bling. This and was all over here. I was working on a completely different project. 
trying to make something for myself. Hey, Sonya Burnett. Welcome. All right. Let's move the alcohol out of the way. And let's move this out of the way. Let's set that up there. And we're going to move this. All right, you guys. So on the cutting mat, Oh, that's what the lid is for. Cyan. For the mat, for the Romeo, I'm going to have to use a different brand of mat because I have a 12 by 12 um, mat. I don't have a about 24. Thank you, Gail Designs. I appreciate you saying that. Let's highlight that. If you do take the classes, as she pointed out, you are able to get the replay on Zoom and watch it over and over as you need to because you will need the replay. I'm just, you, you just, you're going to need the replay. There's no getting around it. Um, unless you have photographic memory or something like that, I don't, you know. And if you do, I'm happy for you because I don't have that. Put the heat press on, and now we need to move this forward. Actually, you found a cricket hat press for 51 at Walmart. Holla for your cricket press. Holla, y'all, yeah, funny. Yeah, because when I tell you my Walmart is not, there's no muy bueno, they're not good, they're mean to me. They refuse to put my stuff on parents, and it makes me sad. Why do it sound like them people are having a humdinger of a time next door? I don't understand. All right, so I'm gonna move this forward and over because we need room for that mat to go back and forth. It doesn't have to go back and forth very far. That's the good thing, but it is gonna have to have some room. And I don't particularly care for this mat here. I'm hoping it's gonna treat me well because a lot of times what I found is if you have a dirty mat, a low down dirty mat, then your stuff won't, your your thing won't cut cleanly. You gotta have a nice clean surface. And that also means I need to get some cloth. So now what kind of sense does it make? I don't have thoughts sitting right here, y'all. That's crazy. Um, okay. Hopefully I haven't used this one. Yep, I have messed with this one. Actually, it don't look like I messed with it back here. Okay, how big was my thing, y'all? It said uh, it's 12, so 13, 14 ish. Finally got my HTV Ron Auto Press and Table and also purchasing the buy-in for the first time. Thank you. Oh, uh, congratulations on your HTV Ron Auto Press. Hello. Hey, y'all, it's funny. And then Josette got her a new serger. You plan to unbox it today. Oh, no. Uh, well, congratulations on your serger. Hello. Yes, honey. Yes. Congratulations. And I'm sorry you're under the weather, honey. 
Hope you get to feeling better. Hope you get to feeling better. You can see what my see how that's going that way. It shifted in the graph tech because I wasn't paying it. any attention, and apparently it wanted to act a fool. So there you are. All right. So I'm going to this. Hopefully, this will do what it's supposed to do. Hey, yo. The HP Runt beat, and it is done. Heating up. Anyways. Is a little short, so hopefully, I won't have any issues. Out of it. <laughs> All right, and Romeo has been doing really well with his speed. This mat is long, give me some room. All right. All right. So cut speed. Nope, we're not doing holographic. Let's go back. Cut settings. This is what I wanted to do. Other block load. Cut speed. I got it on 13. I'll turn it down to 12. And then force of 62. I'm going to shoot more for 64. And that's what we fence the rock and roll with. And so I'm going to send this on over to the um, thingy and let it cut. There we go. All right. So while that's cutting, what y'all got going on? Holler. Thank you, Carrie. Carrie said the first time via the bling. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Unless you want to see it cut. I don't think y'all want to see it cutting, but you might want to. Thank you, Donzel. Thank you very much. Was in Hobby Lobby, most of the Cricut vinyl and hat press 50% off. They have a full aisle of Hobby Lobby brand vinyl. Yeah, that's what me and the mister was discussing. Um, hey, SJ Braggs, welcome. Um, that's what me and the mister was discussing. It's kind of interesting how these companies, let's see, let's do this, how the companies are um, com getting their own branding and doing their own branding. And it kind of sucks a little bit. So this machine printer backwards than Cricut. Seems like you loaded it in the bottom of the mat. I did. I did put it at the bottom. Um, so you tell it where to start. That kind of confused me too. Actually, let's share screen. Glad you asked. Love Romeo. <laughs> so I just said it's about lots of bling from the buy-in. So excited. Awesome. Can't wait till you get it. Hey, Fat Look Creations. Welcome. So if you take a look at um this is Leonardo, the Caesar software for the Juliet and the Romeo. If you take a look at it, one of the things I can definitely say about um 
Romeo and how it does, like what you see is what you get. And that's one thing that I do absolutely love. So here is an, a visual representation of your cutting mat. And it honestly looks just like the cutting mats. Um, so wherever you put it on the cutting mat, that's where it's going to cut. So I could have taken this all the way up to here and let it cut up there, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be down on this end. So what I did was I put my blade, I started, I moved my blade to where it was right here in this lower left-hand corner so that the machine knew this is where I wanted it to, this is the edge of the mat and this is where you can go ahead and cut. So whereas with Cricut, it kind of goes based on the mat. I'm trying to think of the best way to explain that. It is based on the mat and it knows its mat and it'll go ahead and do everything. But with Leonardo, because it allows you to cut matless if you want to, you can kind of tell it you you need to tell it where you want it to start uh, so that it will cut properly hopefully that made sense and i didn't confuse you but at the end of the day the most important thing you need to know is with leonardo here's your mat and you tell it where you want it where you want it to cut i can put it tell it to cut up here i can tell it to cut down here by simply moving my designs where i want them on the mat and that's how these guys work. Hey, Terry Hunt. Hey, Willie Roseman. I still get nervous when you use that rotary cutter. I had cut my finger six months before you did. I did not know that. And I am so sorry because that was crazy. That was not quite traumatizing, but it was like, yeah, no, that's, that's just crazy. <laughs> Has Prince always told us to subscribe to your channel? I just noticed that night. Yes, Fat. Look, me and Prince are pretty tight. Um, and so he, he definitely put that message out there, uh, for the masses to see, yeah. Seeing your screen helped a lot. You're welcome, Shay Shay. <laughs> uh, got one of those handle suction. Yes, fam. You have to, because we want to keep safe and there's, we got a lot of okay. Let me let me show y'all something. We got a lot of dangerous tools in our arsenal, right? So I got these from DIME, and I have an extra one to give away. But I've been torn on this thing. I don't know if I'm gonna give it away. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna give it away or not, fam. Because I don't know. I don't trust y'all. <laughs> After this week, starting next week, we'll be doing some embroidery stuff again. Uh, since the buy buy-in will be over, we'll go we'll do some more embroidery projects. And I have quite a few embroidery uh tools and doodads that I like to show you guys because it is quite helpful in your um crafting to have cool tools to use, you know. So like for instance, you guys know we got the weeding tools. Caesar has weeding tools and all that jazz. Um, my speed is 12 and the force is 64. Jackie says, but I like that Cricket has numbers on the mat and Leonardo doesn't. Jackie, let them know. Send a, send a note and tell them you, you do like numbers being there. So as you can see, um, one thing I have learned and I absolutely love about Caesar. They listen. They hear us. They love the feedback. They want to know what you want. So I'm sure that there's some kind of way they can flip some kind of switch or something and work out because they do have their own custom mats. That's the only reason why I'm saying that. Like, it's not like they don't have a mat at all. They do have a mat. So let them know you do want to have the numbers on the mat it would be helpful um and it's a very strong possibility they'll listen and work towards getting that done because they want their customers to be happy 
So I do absolutely love them for that. Hey, Marta. Hey, Keisha Ross. Um, Beth, I've cut my little finger with a rotary cutter at work once, girl. I'm trying to tell you. Um, that whole, that was tragic. That was tragic that night. But going back to the danger, one of the things that um, we tend to have an issue with in uh, embroidery is you get the bird's nest up under your embroidery. So like, for instance, um, there's kind of like a, a visual representation of what that would look like um, up under your embroidery machine. And it makes that whole tangled mess. And sometimes the bird nest is so bad that you can't even take the hoop off of the machine. And that's a pain in the butt. SJ Braggs, thank you. Mine too. <laughs> hey, Tiago, welcome, welcome. How are you tonight? So I got an extra one of these. This is a bird's nest remover set, okay? And it comes with a hook and it comes with the thing to cut the thing. So what I used to tell people in the past was get one of these... Um, That's not the right kind. I got one right here, but it's not the right kind. Let me see if I can if I got one. Let me move that out the way and move this out of the way. Yeah. One of these kind where you can scoop the thing all the way out, the blade all the way out, and it reaches all the way up under there, right? Well, you don't have any way to grab hold of the strings and the whole thing. Anyway, this is by dime and it's a kit that lets you grab hold of those strings and cut it at the same not you know not at the same same time but it's a kit that you use together so let me show it to you and i was going to show this to you guys and like do a giveaway but i don't know so here's the hook <laughs> oh i tickle myself with this so here's the hook right so you know and it is sharp. Like, this is a very, very, very sharp point. Okay? Number one. Then number two, so you reach up under the hoop and grab hold of the strings that are tangled, right? And while you're holding them taut, this is the blade that you use to cut it with, y'all. Fam. Look, let me... <laughs> Hold on, because I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. But I, okay, so I'm kind of like sliding it on this flat side with my thumb because y'all, it's look, y'all, it's a whole lot of cussing scalp. It's a scalpel, like, and it needs to be sharp. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> it needs to be sharp to cut them threads. But I was like, I don't know that I want to send this out to nobody for free. <laughs> let you i'm gonna let you buy this on your own <clears throat> because or uh if you get cut it's gonna be on you okay but anyways you hold on to the string and you use this to go under that hoop and cut those strands so that you can cut your hoop loose this is the kit okay it works it does work i i love the fact that it works it is intimidating to me only because, number one, this is super sharp, and that is sharp as well. And you really do need to be careful when you're using our stuff. So if there's ever, you know, a, a suggestion that we have to make sure that we stay super safe in our working environment, then I do tend to let folks know. Because when I cut my finger, I never in a million years would I have ever expected to cut my finger like I did because I've been cutting fabric with a rotary cutter for a long time and I was I I knew I had it it wasn't that big of a deal but that day I did not have it so yeah right right Sheila so this is the kit this is the this is how it comes and like I said it is very helpful in getting your bird's nests cut out on your machine. Now, the, the kind of sucky thing about it, I'm showing it to you guys, but at the same time, 
like in order for me to show you how it works, I have to get a bird's nest. And that's some I cannot stand a bird's nest. Um and hopefully one day we'll when we do some more work with our embroidery machine, we can talk about it a little more in detail. But with the bird's nest, a lot of times what happens is you will um, break a needle. A lot of times when you get the bird's nest, the needle will break. And if the needle breaks, there's a good possibility that the needle has punctured your bobbin case down in the bottom of your embroidery machine. And that causes a whole nother slew of problems. So bird's nest, you want to avoid these as much as possible. And that's easier said than done sometimes. But you can do it by just, you know, triple, quadruple checking your settings and stuff like that on your machine. But yeah, so Nicole Reeves more like stair strip. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't. We have some interesting stuff in our arsenal. And so that being the case, we want to be sure that, um, you know, we're safe in the things that we do. So, but anyway, <laughs> I swear, I was like, oh, I'm going to do a giveaway. And I looked at that thing. I was like, mm, nah, I ain't doing no giveaway. Bump that. It should come packaged with Band-Aids, right? Right. So, yeah, but it does work. Hey, Tanya, you? Hey, honey, buddy. Welcome. <laughs> But yeah, this is, yeah, this, it does work. And it's, see, like Sheila said, she had to cut a hole in her fabric to get that bird's nest loose. But if you had something like this, you wouldn't have to cut a hole in the fabric unless the fabric was pulled down into your bobbin area too. That does happen as well. So yeah, it's, embroidery can be um, a pain in the butt. Let me see if I can't find a picture of a bird's nest so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and I'm sure I have a video somewhere to to show on my channel. Why are they showing me this? Okay. <laughs> this is like a literal bird's nest. Okay, so here's... This isn't a really good picture, but this is a picture. Let me share screen. So here is, see how that thread is all bunched down in there? But that's not a good picture because that's the picture. And this is technically a bird's nest too. Um, and I just, literally just took that bag out of here. <laughs> um, I'm going to find something with him. Well, let me see if this will work. Let me see if I can show you this. Oh, no, I got something. Okay. So, huh, there's the bird's nest too. Uh, that kind of, so you see how the embroidery looks right there and then all of a sudden it's this whole hot food mess right here. That's considered a bird's nest. Um, But what i kind of wish i could show you this is one kind of the way to see it see how it's all that thread is bunched up up under there these are birds nests um but the worst kind is when you're embroidering oh here we go there we go see right here let me see if i can't make this bigger Probably not. I don't know whose website this is. Uh, okay. There we go. So see how that thread, this is this is your fabric, you're sewing. This is with the sewing machine though. So you can do the same thing, have the same issue with an embroidery machine. Um, except the fabric will be in an embroidery hoop, right? And as you're doing embroidery, you get a bird's nest. And so down up under here, all that thread will hang on to your fabric and will not let go. And it's 
stressful because you're trying to finish a project and now your stuff is stuck. Sometimes, like even what Sheila was saying, sometimes the fabric can get so bogged down and so bad that it'll get down in this bottom part and you do have to cut your fabric. Like if you're embroidering on a shirt, you'll have to cut the shirt. There's just no getting you. You can hang it up. It's over and done with. Um, but let's go back. As you see, they use the hook right there to reach up under there and grab the threads. And so here is what it looks like when, you know, you reach up under there, even though she moved the hook out of the way, but you reach up under there with that blade and you just cut it, you know, slice straight flush up against the machine. And then once you cut it, then you'll be able to free your fabric and then go on with what you was. Well, it depends if you're if you have to cut your fabric, then you have to start over. But if you're able to cut those threads loose, then a lot of times you can save the project and just, you know, find out what's going on. Sometimes what I found with birds nests and what causes them a lot of times I found usually is something dealing with the threading up top at the top part of that embroidery machine. Something didn't do right up there. Either your thread got snagged on something um, and we can show all of that on an embroidery session. Um, your thread gets tangled. You didn't thread it with the foot up when you were threading your machine, I mean, there's a whole list of stuff up top that will cause a bird's nest down below. So you kind of have to be careful with what you're doing. And as long as you keep the machine in good working condition and thread it the way you're supposed to pay attention to your embroidery machine, why we have a bad habit of walking away from the embroidery machine or turning our back to the embroidery machine and working on something else, like how, over there, Romeo is cutting his little heart out. I really should be over there paying it some attention, but I, I got him up there on the camera so it's easy to see, but we shouldn't be walking away from our projects because it's super, super easy for things to go haywire. And it's definitely the case with an embroidery machine. So that's where these little doohickeys come into play. And it's helpful. But the most important thing is to make sure that you're paying attention and watching it so that it doesn't get so bad that you actually have to pull out something like this okay um yeah the 10 needles are pricey they are pricey but keep in mind that the 10 needles are um and usually commercial type machines uh, where you can do larger projects it's a larger machine you have to buy larger cones of thread and you usually have to buy larger rolls of stabilizer. So the price doesn't stop with the machine. The price goes up with just about everything in regards to using the larger embroidery machines. And to be quite blunt, I barely use the larger sizes on my embroidery machines. Um, I only have a select few projects that I would do on a kind of regular basis, and that's jackets. Um, but I have an account that, um, or a customer, a regular customer that would bring um, jackets for me to embroider the back and the front of the jacket. Um, duffel bags, their duffel bags, I actually could do on my, um, single needle embroidery machine. I don't have to do those. Well, I have to look at the design again, but it's still not a very big design. Those bigger designs, the bigger the hoop and the bigger the design, the longer it's going to take to stitch that sucker out. And a lot of... I didn't put that two and two together until I got the machine and started stitching big stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do a six by 10 design. I can do a 10 by 10 design. And by the time I started looking at 60, 70, 80,000 stitches and it's taking two, three, four hours to stitch this thing out, I was over it. I wasn't trying to hear 
sitting there for two, three, four hours watching this machine. Because like I said, you really should not be walking away from your machine. Um, so the nuances of being able to embroider bigger is all well and good until you actually start embroidering bigger. I mean, that's a personal view on it. Yeah, you can embroider, embroider bigger, but, you know, I want one because I like doing in the hoop zipper. Okay, so, like, with that, Sheila, those type projects, yes. The larger machine that'll work up quickly. You don't have to stress, sweat, nothing about it, blah, blah, blah. But when you talking about doing big jacket bags, blankets with big names on them, stuff like that, that's the projects that you know and to be honest if you're going with multi-needle unless you have the disposable income to just spend on a hobby you really should be looking at multi-needles for business purposes and when i'm saying business purposes um i'm talking about business as far as you have business established so let's go into um she puts a baby monitor by hers that's funny let's go into like from my personal experience now granted like ruji is saying she started out with the tin needle because she likes doing large designs that's great if she has the uh disposable to be able to invest in that and she can get it and she's okay with it that's good i didn't have that i did not have that at all still don't have that okay so what the way i had to do it and this is just personal experience right i started out with a four by four embroidery machine the four by four embroidery machine was limited it's a little bitty, little bitty area to embroider and you'd be feeling all sad and left out because all these other people are doing these bigger designs and doing bigger stuff, right? At the time, back then, the 4x4 was 350 and the 5x7 at the time was 800, 750, 800. Now it's a 1,000, um, but the 4x4 has went back down fortunately to about the 350 400 range um but at any rate so when you start out with that four by four machine you kind of be feeling some kind of way because you want to do bigger so if you can swing bigger start out with the five by seven yes but if you can't start out with the four by four fam it's a lot of stuff that you can do with that four by four machine and what i did was i was able to build my business or build business clientele with the 4x4 machine by uh, sticking to 4x4 projects and doing like smaller left chest logos, um, doing baby onesies, doing designs on the monograms, you know, stuff like that that could fit in the 4x4, doing the smaller 4x4 in the hoop projects. And what happened was people were still having me do embroidery albeit it was small i was still able to do embroidery projects for them and the more i was doing the more they were telling people hey she can do it it's affordable blah 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 and i didn't feel like charge i didn't i didn't feel qualified to charge big business embroidery prices because i was just small little me at home doing stuff because i wanted to right and so it wound up being that I was doing so much embroidery with that little four by four machine that I had to get another one. And I went on to Facebook marketplace, found somebody that was selling one because he was like, his wife wasn't using it and he getting rid of it. Now that I look back, that was cold, but it worked out for me. So I got the machine. It was dirt cheap. I think I got it for $200. I was running two of them, two four by four machines at one time. Them two machines was working so hard at one point, I got a third machine. So I had three of them going at one time. And these are four by four machines that were staying fairly busy. So what happens is you wind up being able to, as long as you're profitable, you wind up being able to save up 
from those guys working, you already got clientele because they're coming to you with these little projects. So then when you invest in the bigger machine and you're like, okay, hey guys, guess what? I can go bigger. Now, all of a sudden, the customers that you already had are definitely coming to you. Oh, well, bet. Let's go with this bigger design. I want this. I want that. And then that's when the bigger projects started coming in. The duffel bags, the jackets, the hats, the this to that, because I was able to do that kind of stuff at that point. Um, so that's how that gradually increased. Um, I didn't, I wasn't able to get the multi-needle and then just out the box offering stuff. Also keep in mind that just because you have the multi-needle machine, it doesn't guarantee the business. It doesn't guarantee the business. So you still have to build up your clientele and uh, get business folks that are going to come and request your services. Okay. Um, and Ruzi said she found a sale that she could afford per month. That's why she went for it. And yeah, so you made I made your husband laugh. Why did he laugh, Beth? Girl, why? Um, uh, hey, Miss Eartha Lewis, how are you? Um, why when I was at a uh, I don't see the option to join as a member in your page, so I can't watch all of your videos. You, there's nothing to fix, Shay Shay. Um, you can go to our channel when you click on our main channel here on YouTube, whatever it says up at the top youtube.com slash the baby's booty blah blah whatever it says at the end of that just types the forward slash in the word join and you'll be taken immediately to the member page that's a youtube thing i don't know why it wouldn't show um the join button but the i went to a show and i was explaining all of this at, i was doing a presentation at the graphics pro expo and i was going over all of this and telling people you know why are you spending on something that doesn't really have a guarantee? Use what you got and use the money that you have. Don't go into debt, you know, until you can build up your clientele. And the lady was there with her husband and her husband was like, you see, that's why they was, was kind of down. Matter of fact, <laughs> anyway, I let me not say that part, but he was like, you see it? Da, 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 and she was hot at me because she was like but i want to buy it and he won't let me and he's now he's on your and i'm like look no time out <laughs> i'm not trying to divide households here what i'm trying to do is give you guys a goal to work towards together i'm not saying don't get it what i'm saying is get it when you're ready and when the the income and the uh finances can support it you know, because it really doesn't, you can be on a fixed income and get, I don't know, a tax return or something. And you might be able to swing and get that machine. But like I said, it still costs money to run the machine. It still costs money to operate the equipment. You got to get the thread, the larger spools of thread. You don't have to have the larger spools of thread, but fam those machines eat spools of thread for dinner so those little bitty spools don't last up there especially black and white and stuff like that so you gotta find you some bigger spools you gotta get bigger stabilizer you know so all of those things tend to add up and then you're going to be looking for bigger designs you got to pay for bigger designs pay for somebody to create the bigger designs that you want um you know it's it, it is what it is and and i don't want to misinform or make anybody feel i don't want anyone to go into this with with blinders on and not realize that this is all an investment every bit of it if you have money to burn like you come into a windfall and you can swing it swing it fam swing for the fences i'm just go big or go home if you can swing that but if you can't swing it, if you're at home and you're on a budget and you're saying, I wish I could, you can plan for it, plan out for it, put, do what I did, put that picture of that multi-needle up on the wall 
which is what I did. It was up beside my door in my old studio for ages. That machine, right? Well, it wasn't the brother. It was the uh, baby lock. Still, same machine, though. The picture was up on the wall beside the door for the longest time. I would go in and out and see that machine every day. So I knew what my goal was. And I knew that when I had extra, so to speak, from the jobs and the stuff that I was doing, I needed to put that up to plan for that. You have to have that as a goal. Otherwise, you're going to be at Michael's and every time they got a sale, every time a hat press, every time this, every time that, and all your disposable income is going somewhere else and it's not going to your goal. Oh, wait a minute. New member, welcome, Ella. Holla. Yes, honey. Yes. <laughs> Hold on, Shay Shay. Let me do this right here. Let's see if this works for you, my dear. All right. If that works, dear. Um, so yeah, don't, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Let me know if it doesn't work. I have the family business for a multi-needle machine. It doesn't have to be the 1010. What do you recommend? Miss Joy. So if you have the business, um, the other question, let's, let's go over here too, because even though I'm running out of time, I'm still going to go over here. Do, do, let's, oh, that's what I need to do. Hold on. Let's see. Okay. So the other part to picking the machine is you need to know what it is that you're going to be doing. That's the other part. So if you're going to want to do hats, for instance. Um, now, I don't want to discount or be negative about any particular brand or whatever but what i will say is the larger commercial the larger industrial machines okay miss joyce this is a loaded it's a loaded question that's a loaded question and i'm gonna tell you why it's a loaded question there are pros and cons to every type of embroidery machine out there Pros and cons, okay? I knew that was going to be close to the edge. And look at that, y'all. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, I do not want to cry. But see, the mat was decent over there. And I knew that raggedy mat wasn't going to help me out. But it's okay. Um. Uh-oh, I see a new member. Hold on. Here we go. And I didn't see who it was, but I'm going to assume it was Shay Shay. Shay Shay's a new member. Hi, y'all, honey. Yes, I'm glad it worked. And Gail Design, thank you for nine months, ma'am. Hi, y'all, honey. Yes, thank you, Miss Gail. Um, so when you are looking at going with an embroidery machine, um the commercial machines that i absolutely love and strongly recommend if you're going to do this as a business i would definitely suggest the commercial machines and i'm sorry not commercial industrial machines and when i say industrial i'm not talking about the brother multi-needle machines the reason why is because you want to have a machine that is rated and made for continual embroidery 24 hours a day seven days a week non-stop there may come a time miss joys where you're so busy doing orders you don't need to stop okay the other part to these industrial machines is and why i say if you're doing this as a business it really should be the industrial machines the other reason why I suggest that is because your industrial machines, you're taught how to service those machines yourself. You will not 
be taught how to service the brother multi needle machines. They're not going to teach you that. Um, and the reason being is because it voids your warranty if you open up that machine and do anything to it. But the problem with that is, um, in order to get your machine repaired, you have to take it to a brother authorized repair shop. Um, nothing wrong with taking it to a brother authorized repair shop. The problem is, it's going to take time for them to repair your machine it's not going to be uh bring it in and pick it up an hour later so whatever orders it is that you were working on and trying to get out the door so that you can make money off of it and you told that customer that it would be ready in 10 days and here you were already swamped with other orders and today is the seventh day and you got three days to do it you're gonna have to make a phone call to your customer and say hey guess what my machine went down. I can't. I can't. I had to take it into the shop. The shop said there's going to be two weeks. Blah, 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 blah. Whereas with those industrial machines, they either will have already taught you how to fix certain things on that machine or they will FaceTime or call and walk you through how to fix whatever the situation is. You just have to make sure that whatever industrial machine it is that you purchase, that they do offer that level of support. Most of them do. Okay. So keep that in mind as well. Um, the other thing is now, I don't know if it has changed in recent years because the machine that I have from Brother, the Brother Molten Needle, I have is uh, about six years old, I think. Um, but that machine, um, when it came with a hoop, I'm sorry, it came with a hat hoop is what I'm trying to say so that I could embroider on hats. Well, what I did not know at the time of purchase was that it was talking about those soft flimsy hats that you can get from like Walmart or whatever. So let me show you what I mean real quick while I'm standing here because I do have one. Uh, let's see. So for instance, this is a hat that is um this this hat is unstructured. What does structure mean? Structure means uh, when something is structured, that means, oh Lord, I'm so sorry, y'all. Blue Emerald Creation, Sandra. Hi, y'all, honey. Y'all, it's member for 11 months. Thank you so very much. Geneva Coleman is a new member. Hi, y'all, honey. Y'all, thank you so very, very much for your support of our channel, Miss Geneva. And Ruzi has been a member for 25 years. Yes, honey. <laughs> yes, and we love you too, Miss Ruji. Over two years, y'all. Over two years. It is so awesome. And then Sheila Cushionberry has been a member for 14 months. <laughs> oh, so sweet. Thank you, Sheila. I appreciate you so very, very much. Um I definitely always appreciate you and being a part of our channel. That's for certain. You help us out so much over here and I appreciate it. Um, I saw something. Oh, here it is. So Cynthia says she has her 15 needle, but just bought a baby lock flare. Looking forward to unboxing. So that goes into uh, what else I was. This is an unstructured hat. Structure means it is supported. It's firm, no issues with it. But this is not, see how floppy this is? See, I can ball it up. This is an unstructured hat. But this is a structured hat, a very structured hat. This is one of those, it's similar to a Richardson cap. But see how firm that is? And even, let me take the cardboard out so that you don't think it's cardboard because it's not. See, it's still super stiff. Super, super stiff. Not very much uh flexibility there this is usually the type of hat that your customers are going to come to you with it's so unfair 
they come to you with these. They don't want to come to you with these in most instances. But back then, when I got my embroidery machine with the hat hoop, um, the brother hat machine, uh, I'm sorry, hat attachment, in the manual for the cap attachment, it tells you you are not to embroider structured caps. You're not to embroider uh, bucket hats. And you're not to embroider visors, sun visors. So it was like, bruh, those are the stuff, that's the fun stuff that the people come to you with. So this is all I can do. So you're limited. Now, I don't know if they've changed that since then. I hope they have. I don't know because I don't have one. But just keep in mind that there's usually some limitations with the um, brother machine because it's usually made for the home crafter. It's not necessarily made for the commercial crafting environment. It can be used for it as long as you're not doing anything that needs to be done you know, on an industrial level. Um, and that unfortunately is a consensus that I've heard um, throughout the industrial crafting industry. Um, just had a conversation a couple of weeks ago when I was at the fabric warehouse buying the fabric that day. There was a lady there. She runs uh, or has an embroidery store, pretty big one. And she's been running it for years. And she was like, oh, what kind of embroidery machine do you have? Um, and I said, I have an industrial machine. And she said, industrial machine? What kind of machine is that? And I said, it's a red line. And she was like, oh, I thought you were going to say a brother because that's not an industrial machine. I was like, whoop, okay. I mean, I already knew that. But <laughs> I said, well, I do. I have a brother too. But the uh, red line is uh, industrial. And so, you know, we continued on our conversation, but I mean, it's the truth. So I'm, I definitely am not saying don't get a brother because brothers are excellent machines. Again, each machine has pros and cons. The brother industri uh, the brother commercial machine, multi-needle machine uh, will thread the needle for you. You don't have to thread your own needle, but with the industrial machines, you have to thread your needles. Okay. There's no automatic needle thread. So that cushy life of, you know, ease and luxury is gone. But I will say that in a lot of instances, I don't miss it. When I'm working and I'm doing big jobs, um, I don't miss the needle threader because I'm quick enough and I've been doing it enough. To where I don't have to have it. So if you are not willing to work on your own equipment, if you're not willing to work on your own equipment, if you're not able to work on your own equipment, if you don't have access to a repair person that will come and repair your stuff on site, um, then I would I would go with the brother and then you'll just have to take it in and get it repaired when something happens if, if it goes down and you need some servicing done. That's what I would suggest. Um, trying to think of another reason why I would go industrial other than being able to do hats. Um, oh, another thing you might want to consider is instead of doing uh, multi-needle, because honestly, with the multi-needle machine, sometimes you can change threads just as fast <laughs> as the machine can. Oh, it really isn't that hard to change threads, fam. It's, it's not, and it doesn't take long to change threads. So the multi-needle, yeah, the, it slides over to the needle that has the next color, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know. There's certain things that, you know, people rant and rave about, and it it's good and it, it helps, but you can make do with single needles as well. 
I know some folks that run a business with their single needle machine. Um, so those are your pro, some of the pros and cons that I can think of right now off the top of my head. There are a lot of you in here who do have an industrial machine. If you have one and you have a pro or a con that I did not think of, please put it in the chat so that you can weigh in um we do value the opinion of more than just i'm not the only person structure hat and jackets are what your family requires then you will want to look at an industrial machine miss joyce if you're going with an industrial machine um some of the brands that i would suggest at this point in time in my life would probably be like a Melco. Um, Melco is American made. It is serviceable here in the U.S. You don't have to worry about, you know, any foreign uh, customer service or anything like that. Their customer service, from what I understand, is impeccable. So I would suggest Melco if you're wanting to. Now that's reliability that's brand that's you know all of that jazz happy is another happy is japanese um is a japanese brand they are in my backyard technically i was just there the other day um happy text mac is they have nice industrial machines. They actually had a sale going on. I'm thinking the sale ends today. Huh. I'm going to have to check on that. Because he said the sale would last for two weeks. And I think this week is just one week. So you might could get it on that hot sale um, this week. And for the life of me, I can't even remember what the sale price is. So I'm not helping very much right there. I can find out though. If you're interested in them, they had a, it's not a 15 needle though. I think theirs was a 12 needle. Um, it might have been 15. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't, I was looking at the, I filmed it. I should look at what I filmed. How, how about that? <sighs> so anyway, Tex Mac is a decent one as well. Uh, Japan, all their internals on their machines are all metal. Um, they service their machines for life. They, uh, they are, they still have customers who are using machines from 15, 16, 17 years ago. Um, and they don't, you know, like some companies, if they get a newer upgrade to their equipment, like you can't get parts anymore. Their parts are, um, antiquated or whatever you call it. You don't have to worry about that with Happy. They continue to service their stuff. They continue to support their stuff. Um, see, those are the types of things that I look at. Um, I own a red line. Would I recommend a red line? Yeah, I would recommend a red line. But the thing is, what I, I would recommend it based on what your needs are. If your needs are industrial machines, most affordable you can get um and you just the other stuff kind of aren't isn't really important because the price is too high like Melco is is pricier than most of the embroidery machines out there um multi-needle but like i said it's made here um so there's some extra benefits there that you don't get um, but if you need a lower price range, a more affordable price range, then yeah, you can get Redline and Redline will work. Redline has been a workhorse for me for years. For you. Hey, Melissa. How you doing? I was wondering how you were doing just the other day. I was like, I have not heard from Melissa. I'm happy to see you. Yes, I did say Melco. I did say Melco. Smart Stitch 12 Needle. You set up with a customer support group. Your community is amazing. I have not heard of Smart Stitch. Um, 
I have not heard of smart speech. And I will say when I was at um, Red um, Happy, they were suggesting just be careful with the Chinese machines because sometimes you can, um, they'll go out of business because there was a embroidery machine called a June bug, a ladybug, or some kind of bug, and they're gone. So, like, if anything goes bad with that machine, you're stuck. So, how are you gonna? How are you gonna recoup now? Because they're gone. Um, we are going to do. I'm gonna do this. This is not what I was gonna do, but I'm gonna do this because I'm running out of time. And do one color. And then I will try to make a plan. I really want to come back on one day this week with y'all again. And we may do um, this again with a different color. Did they train you? That's another question you need to ask uh, whatever company it is that you uh, go with. Because if they don't train you, and the thing is, if you bought it, are you also being charged to be trained? Show Fuchsia and Magenta together? Okay. I sure will. I could have showed it right here. Oh, that would have been cute. Fuchsia, Magenta, Fuchsia, Magenta. That would have been super cute. But I'm pulling out Blue Steel because I haven't used Blue Steel in a while. Blue Steel is a navy, um, kind of like a metallic type color. Kind of. um, you're welcome, Robin. Smart Stitch has U.S. trainers available for training setup. So yeah, just it's a there's a lot of things to consider. At the end of the day. You got to figure out what's most important to you um, and your budget. There are companies out there who um, the machine is super duper duper pricey with financing because they got to, that's, that's their thing is they, they know they got financing and so they tend to charge more for the equipment that they really don't have to charge that much for um but i mean that's understandable if you're paying extra for financing and all that other stuff you can't tell a person you can't tell these companies you can't tell a company how much they should be charging for their stuff i will say that you can't do that so the value just like, for instance, Milco is pricier, but they have good darn reasons why they are pricier. So there's a lot of options out there. You kind of got to do your research. Um, I've told you about the ones that I know of and the positives that I know. I mean, I know of others, but I don't know enough of them to recommend them or i know enough of them and i'd still choose not to recommend them so there's one it, you know it's just it is what it is and i have that right to do that um because if i'm not recommending something then i have a pretty darn good reason why i'm not recommending Or I could have forgotten about them. Like SWF, from what I understand, is an excellent brand. I don't know where they are from, though. That's one of the reasons I don't normally recommend. I need to do a little bit more research into their background and customer service and that type of stuff. But very familiar with Melco. Very familiar with... I don't own a Melco, but very familiar with Melco. And very familiar with Redline. Very familiar with Brother.
Um, not as of yet, Miss Marta. I'm ju I just finished it um, tonight, and um, just now cutting this out for the first time because I have a I have a error, so like I gotta fix that. So don't want to sell it with that on there. Um, and it was something else I saw on here that wasn't kosher. I cut that off wrong myself, so that's not an error with the file. That's not me. I mean, that's not the file. That's me. But that's one thing I do love about this file because the stripes are there. Like, you can play with this all kind of which ways and make it what you want it to be uh, with your colors and stuff. You can alternate colors. You can do each row one color. You can do a, a, what's it called? Ombre type thing where you go dark to light or vice versa. Is this so much you can do with this um, type of design with when it has um, rows like this? Kind of like how Marilyn's design has the crayons. Brushing in, so I'm not looking at the chat. I apologize for those who may be saying something to me. But yeah, if you are doing wanting to get into embroidery as a business, I definitely recommend doing an industrial type of machine. Oh, and the other thing about the industrial machine is super cool. Um, the industrial machines generally come with two sets of hoops. So keep in mind, the industrial industry is set up for business. It's set up to make sure that you operate as efficiently as you possibly can as a business owner. That's why the machines cost so much. That's why they, um, you know, operate the way they do and can run for extended periods of time without tearing up anything. A lot of these uh, other, and you know, machines that are commercial in nature, they're, you can run them, but you, you're just not going to run them nonstop like you do uh, a commercial machine. Because, for instance, sometimes doing jacket backs and stuff, and they're taking three, four, or five hours, and you have one... So the whole point in having two sets of hoops is while you're waiting, while one item is being stitched out, you're already able to hoop the very next thing that's going to be stitching because you're, this isn't, this is a business, it's industrial. So they know you're going to be doing volume. So 20 hats, 30 hats, 40 hats, a hundred hats. They already know that. So they have two sets of hoops sitting there so that you can, stitch with one and hoop the next so that as soon as that's done the one you take it off of the machine go ahead and put the next project the next jacket or the next hat on and while and start it up and while that one's stitching you're taking the first one off of the hoop and cutting the jump stitches and getting it together as soon as you're done doing that then you unhoop you go ahead and hoop the next jacket or hat or whatever it is so that you can get that one stitching, so that you can get this bulk order out. That's an industrial machine. It comes with two sets of the hoops so that you can go ahead and, and be shaking and baking when you're trying to make this money and not stopping. Stopping is going to cost you money in an embroidery environment. Stopping costs you money. If you have to stop, whether it be to change thread, whether it be to change a bobbin, whether it be to uh, get the next thing hooped or 
something happened, whatever it is, stopping costs money. Because the quicker you get your job done, the faster you get paid. Because think of it this way. When you're on a regular nine to five type job, you get paid by the hour. So if you have a, if your job is like, okay, I tell you what, your job is to clean out, say you work for the zoo. Your job is to clean out the animal cages. I don't know why that was the first thing that came to my mind, but it'll be all right. Go with me here. Your job is to clean out animal cages. Well, whenever you're finished with all of the animal cages and you're done, even if it's not five o'clock, you can go ahead and go home because your job is done for the day. So you're going to clean your butt off and try and get things done. And of course, clean, do your job well, but you're going to try to clean as fast as you can so that you can leave early and your, your pay per hour technically goes up because you're not working as long, but you're still getting the same rate of pay. Likewise, with your embroidery job, if you get paid a thousand dollars to do a hundred hats, and if a hundred hats takes you three days to do, you're not going to make nowhere near as much money as you would if it only took you one day to do those hundred hats. You see what I'm saying? So that's the whole point of the industrial machine, the double hoops, the um teaching you how to fix your machine so you don't have downtime. That's what the point is of having that type of embroidery machine. Okay. So just keep all of that in mind. I don't think Melco lets you work on your own machine, but I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly, the technicians are pretty quick in getting back to you. But no, actually, I do think they FaceTime and help you fix what you got going on. Now I think about it. Um, so yeah, have a good night. All right, y'all, this is the, um, blue steel wasn't wanting to play nice with me tonight. So I'm having to place a couple of them, a few of them. Labrador should play nicer. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. In a lot of instances, yes, you do get digit digitizing software with the machine. If you already have digitizing software like I did, you sometimes can negotiate a lesser price or for them to take that cost off because I have uh, digitizing software already, so I didn't have to pay that part. So keep that in mind as well. The Gammy Moore. Hey, Gammy Moore. Thank you so much for becoming a member of our channel. Hi, yes, honey. Yes. Mr. McClackens, if somebody gave some really good pros and cons of their industrial machines, could you please put that on the screen? Because I, if I scroll, I'm going to lose time trying to get this thing put back on because I got this mess to deal with that I caused for myself. I may just skip this last row to save myself the aggravation. Even though that's going to look weird because it's going to be skinnier than the rest of them, but I need the time. I'm going to have to cut this one out again and probably turn it long ways so that I make sure it cuts like it's supposed to. So if you uh, would like the shine on template, just give me till tomorrow to get this put in the store so that I can fix that part. Because this cut out and it's, it wasn't supposed to cut out like that, even though it doesn't hurt anything, but I, I don't want, I want your file to be right. Hopefully you can appreciate that. And I'm going to put this on a tote bag for now. Sorry, I came on 310. Y'all, I'm glad I turned around and looked at this. All right.
Um, somebody asking about magnetic hoops. I absolutely love my mighty hoops. Absolutely, mighty hoops don't work with every machine now. Um, most of the industrial machines they do. Most of them, and you got to call them and let them know what machine you have, and they'll get you the right brackets to go with your hoops. Um, for your machine, absolutely, absolutely, and and like Sheila is saying, the magnets are very strong, so you do need to keep your fingers away from the edges and stuff like that because it will snap and it will break your finger. Hey, Lynn, welcome, honey bunny. It will break your finger. All right. Normally, I would do the, the bigger part first, but I'm going to do this part first since I've already brushed it. dark so let's get a lighter colored bag mm. where are my red bags that's what i want i have a red bag for me so we're gonna go with this purple and then we will do if i have a few minutes to do a giveaway for this bag I absolutely love those chrome. The chrome is a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Sharon Davenport. Thank you, Sheila. I do love those chrome stones. All right, let's push this in. And while that is cooking, we're going to put the lid on that so that I don't do what I did last week and pour the wrong stones in the wrong container. Let me peel that. Ooh, that's good. Again, and wanting to. Did I pre press this? Yeah, pre press it. All right. Much better. This Labrador is one of my favorites so i'm using blue steel and this is labrador and labrador usually be labradorian so it's going to be super blingy especially with that blue steel i'm gonna press it again just for the heck of it because it is so canvas like your heavy cam i have heavy canvas tote bags i don't have the kind of wimpy ones when you're pressing heavy canvas, denim, sweatshirts, um, our recommended press time is 350 for 12 seconds. But when you're dealing with a thicker fabric like denim and canvas, um, you're going to have to up that time um, or press it more than one time because you want to be sure that the fabric warms up and that the... Uh, stones get to the temperature that they need to be at to get that glue nice and hot on the back and it takes a while for that fabric to warm up to help get that glue where it needs to be to grab onto the fibers of the fabric so just keep that in mind to press longer for those thicker fabrics okay 
especially denim, especially denim and your sweatshirts. A lot of times I suggest with the sweatshirts, press it at least twice. All right. Uh, did I feel one? I thought I felt one. That's super pretty. I like that by itself. Don't even have to have that part. Move this right here for right now so that we can get out of Dodge. Let's see. Much better. All right. And let's get my other tape. No shenanigans. Yeah, no, no shenanigans. A large picture of me and my business is on heat transfer wear. Is it? I didn't know that. I have to go see. Does the mask not stick to cardstock? Yes, it does stick to cardstock. Whoops, I'm missing some. Um, glitter cardstock, it, does, it tends to not because the glitter holds the it has a coating as well and it keeps the sticky glue from sticking stick uh, from sticking so that's why the glitter cardstock can work but you got other challenges with the glitter cardstock such as um you don't have like this sticks to the surface so stones can't get up under the template, but a cardstock template, um, stones can get up under there. So you got to kind of find a way to stick that cardstock down good on to your working surface so that you can uh, not have issues with your, uh, what's the face? Did that do that? One sec, some of these are not stuck, and I don't know why. Oops. My food still vacuum up. All right, just leave me in. Let's see. Give me some more right there. Missing one right Come on. Yeah, we look. Looks like you got some things. All right, so we're going to press this. And then let you guys see it. Hopefully, I got everything. And hey, Anna, welcome. And as Dennis is pointing out, please be sure to check out his designs that he has on a special deal for you guys for the next 24 hours. Next 24 hours, you can get them at that sale price. And then after 24 hours, the price will go up. So definitely check him out at the Rhinestone Mechanic. The link is in the description below. All right. All right. So here is our tote bag. Let me grab my board so I don't get heat on my cutting mat. And... Here is our Labrador. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is blue steel and this is Labrador. So like I said, you can, um, what? I still got two stones missing. Lord. You can um, work this design. Once I put it in the store, of course, you can work this design all kind of which ways. You can 
do all one color like you see here. I want to try and make sure that that's straight. I'm going to play with the template a little bit before I put it in the store. But you can do alternating colors. You can do colors going in in a gradient. You can do, because my original goal when I was creating this was um, I wanted to do like emerald, emerald AB, hyacinth, hyacinth AB, rose, rose AB. That's kind of the way I wanted to do it. Um, but of course ran out of time. The other part is you can, um, work this however you want. That's, that's the cool thing about this particular design, the way I yeah, have it. Okay. So oh, well, it's gonna do a giveaway, but this thing is acting monkey. Let me see if I can get this and make sure I didn't miss any other stones. Make sure. Make sure. All right. The new colors. Um. So the colors that were not in the last buy-in is magenta and um. I think neon red AB wasn't in there. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. I'll have to look at the list. Ooh. Ooh, 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 that's hot. Hot and sparkly. Hot and hot. Hot and hot. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. That's crazy. Look at that. Somebody come and look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. So, real quick, she asked earlier for magenta and fuchsia. Hopefully we won't go too far over, you guys. Let me see what time it is. Yeah, it's eleven oh three already. Okay. So magenta and fuchsia. So this is magenta, and this is fuchsia. And the buy-in is going to end tonight. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, guys. Gorgeous rose. Thank you. Yeah, they were silver. The Labrador is silver. It's a silver color. This one is magenta. This one is fuchsia. I forget who asked for it. I think it was Nicole Pricing. But I'm not sure. No, it's not too late, Faith. The buy-in is tonight. You have until midnight Pacific time. So 3 a.m. if you're on the East Coast. Midnight if you're in Cali. So this is magenta. And this is fuchsia. Someone asked earlier. So honestly, I would have kind of like one of the cool things I could alternate fuchsia, magenta, fuchsia, magenta, fuchsia, magenta, and then do silver star. Oh my gosh, that would have been super cute. Nicole, okay, it was you. Okay, cool. Thank you. So if you're in here and you want to... Um, enter for the tote bag. Make sure your screen, refresh your screen so that you can make sure that you're up. And for the tote bag, type in the word tote, T-O-T-E. And now give me a sec to, while you're typing the word tote, it'll give me a sec to get these put where they're supposed to be. Get giveaway, blah, 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 pulled up. Dang, it. StreamYard giveaway pulled up and then um, get you guys up and going and hit it off because technically it's midnight. My body is saying it's midnight. That's what my body is saying. And I don't want your body to be saying, oh my God, she got us up late. These up. Boom. Okay. And I'm going to change cameras. Oh, let me cut that off. Change cameras. What did I do with the tote bag that quick? It was. Lord, how am I give it away and I lost it? Oh, here it is. Sure. 
Ugh, like I said, it's hard. It's hard, y'all. It's hard. Uh oh, I see it. Super chat. Let's see. Settings. Can't do that though. Actually, let's do this. Okay. There we go. Thank you so much for the super. Holla. Y'all funny. <laughs> Y'all say that chrome is awesome. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this, 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 and this. And please be sure to not forget to go check out the Ransom Mechanic. Don't forget also, if you're interested in doing the class, the beginner's class, um, I will go back and put the link in the description for the beginner's class, but I also have the advanced class up. Um, real quick, this is the tote bag. It is made with blue steel and Labrador rhinestones, blue steel and Labrador, and it's on a lavender tote bag. So if you're interested, go ahead and type tote. You know what? Because, yeah, I'm going to have to edit this, y'all, because I want some more stones. Wait a minute. No, stones don't go right there. Oh, yeah, they do. I want some more stones right there. I got some more editing to do. To clean it up, okay? Let me clean it up, and then I'll put it on. So give me till Tuesday to put this on the site, and I'll let you guys know. Look at that. Look at that blue steel, blue stealing. Okay? All right. So that's the tote bag. Um... And then thank you for coming in and hanging with us tonight. I totally appreciate it. Um, We're going to let this thing click comments. I don't know why it's not because y'all way more than that. I thought it would do better. Come on. You might have to type it again. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Type it again. You got time. Ooh, I should have remind me next time from now on. You see anybody do StreamYard? Tell them they got to set it up first and then people can type the word tote. So go ahead and type it again if you typed it already, please. It's super cute. That turned out super cute. That blue steel is over here like, yes, we already knew we was bomb.com. So if you win, I'm sorry it's not perfect, but it's the first and I had fun doing it. So at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. All right, so go ahead and make sure you typed in the word tote. And if you win, then please be sure to email me um, at thebabiesbooty at gmail.com. Super important that you email me there so that I will get your um, address. Email me your name and your address at thebabiesbooty at gmail.com so that I can get this out to you. Okay, don't, because if you don't email me, I'm not going to mail it out. If you don't email me there, I'm not going to mail it out because I'm going to forget because I'm not going to see your email in the right place or the kids won't remind me. I need to see that email in that email address, okay, so that I can get it out to you. And you got till Tuesday to email me. So email me tonight, all right? So let's go ahead and hit draw so that you can email me right now because you won the shine on tote why are you shining with the finer things oh my god oh my god Hello. yes miss gail that's what's up that is awesome sauce so yay miss gail congratulations to you for winning the shine on tote Thank you so very much for participating. So you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. It was awesome. I had fun. Um, this week coming, we will be working on some embroidery stuff, our next live. So if you're interested in embroidery at all, then come and hang out with us. Uh, we'll have some more embroidery tips and tricks, more information on the larger machines and stuff. If you're interested, we're here for you. Make this process as easy and as smooth as we possibly can in 
incorporating all of these things into your business if that's what you want to do or if it's just for fun we still want to make this as easy as possible so that's why we source the finer thingling and that's also why uh we go step by step and showing you how to do every last one of these different processes so thank you again for hanging out with us i had a ball and definitely join us over on Facebook so that you can uh, come hang out and show us what you've been working on in your studios. All right. So we hope you have a great night springing forward. I still got to recuperate this week. I'm lagging behind. So thank you for hanging out with us. You have a great night. And until the next time we see you, we hope you have happy shining on. <laughs> Good night. How would you define luxury? Your purchase of our rhinestones has put extravagance right at your fingertips. Here at the Baby's Booty, we are taking the standard of luxury and bringing it directly to you. Introducing the perfect companion to your Lux rhinestones. The baby's booty ice boxes. Our ice boxes are in the perfect sizes to complement your order. Each color in your purchase will be labeled and packaged in these elegant acrylic boxes, ready to display your luxury stones for everyone to see. The baby's booty ice box, where our bling is the finer thing.